everyone. I'm Rowena Peters, the Head of Department Mathematics at the Cerebral College of Education. Welcome to Mathematical Modeling and Prediction. Now this course is also called MMP, it's just an abbreviation of Mathematical Modeling and Prediction. It is also referred to as MTH112, and this is what we call the course code. So at some times you may see any of these three names appearing on your course uh, materials, such as the Moodle platform, your um, modules, or even your course outlines. All right, so this course is a first year course, and it's offered to all first years, early childhood, and pre-service um, students. So if you're enrolled or early childhood or primary student, you are required to complete this course. Okay, students, so this course, Mathematical Modeling Prediction, this course is offered to all early childhood and primary um, students who are enrolled at the Cerebral Water College of Education. It's a first year course and it is completed in the first semester of the first year. All right, so the main aim of this course, teachers, will be to equip you with basic computational, analytical, and drawing skills, right? As student teachers, you will use computation to perform tasks related to your work. You use computation to make sense of data and effectively analyze it to draw a conclusion. And also, you will learn how to draw shapes accurately and use their properties to design materials realistically in the classroom. All right, students, let's talk a little bit about what the structure of the course is gonna be like. Now, this is a three credit course, which means that it's expected to be completed in four to five hours. It is made up of two units, a unit one and a unit two. Now, the first unit, the unit one, is what we normally would refer to as the basic math aspect. And in this aspect, it has been assigned 30 hours. This unit deals with the science of numbers, algebra, and application of algebraic concept in solving real life problems. The second unit, which we just referred to as unit two, is based generally on measurement. Measurement, space, and shapes. This unit is designed for 15 hours. It focuses on both 2D and 3D space, and the properties of shapes and solid. In this unit, focus will also be placed on representing information on diagrams and interpreting information from diagrams. All right, so students, please note that the course content for this MMP, um, it's similar and it has most of the stuff covered at CSEC level, but the focus here for you as teachers in training is to focus on misconceptions you would have had at, at at CXC, clarifying those misconceptions, and also a focus, a focus should be placed on conceptual understanding. So in saying this, I urge you to ensure that you utilize all the credit hours to be successful in this course. So at this point, I will just like to introduce you to my colleague. Um, she is a full-time tutor, lecturer two at the Sarah Porter College of Education. And she is going to be one of the main persons who will be presenting mathematical modeling and prediction lessons to you in the future. Thank you. Hello, students. How are you? I hope you're excited because we will be learning a new concept. My name is Ms. Hannah Jagru, and I'm currently lecturing mathematical modeling and prediction at the Cyril Potter College of Education. I will be teaching you about decimal numbers. In this lesson, we will identify the place values of decimals through 10,000s using base 10 blocks. So, let's get started. What is a decimal number? A decimal number is the base 10 system for expressing a mixed number. In other words, it is a way of naming the values that lie between whole numbers. The whole number is separated from the fractional portion of the number with a decimal point. An example of a decimal number is one and four tenths. It is written as 1.4. One is the whole number and four tenths is the fractional part of the number. The number one and four tenths lie between the whole number one and two. A decimal point written as a dot or period 
separates the whole number from the fractional part of the number, as you can see. Can you read this number for me? Right, if you said two and 35 hundredths, you're absolutely correct. Two is the whole number and 35 hundredths is the fractional part of the number. Now, how would you write three and six tenths as a decimal number? If you wrote 3.6, you are correct. Now, here is an online game that you can play to practice reading decimal numbers. I assure you, boys and girls, that it is going to be fun. How to play. Step one, you play the role of a 17th century Caribbean buccaneer who sails from port to port looking to steal from Spanish treasure ships. Step two, read the decimal message that appears at the top of the screen. Then, shoot the boat that matches the decimal message. That is, that has the numerical version of the message. With your decimal cannonball by clicking on it, you move from wrong to wrong by destroying all of the ships. Step 3. After each wrong you successfully pass, you can obtain a special code that will take you to that wrong each time you play. One, one, one. Early childhood, good one. Now let us look at place value of decimal numbers. Place value is the position of a digit in a number. Place value is a word. 
The value of a number is what an individual digit is worth in a number. In this case, value is a number. When writing decimal numbers, it is important to understand the concept of place value. The benchmark for place value is the decimal point because it separates the whole number from the fractional number. If you look on the chart, you will notice that the place value changes by a magnitude of 10 as the digit placements move to the left or to the right of the decimal point. You will also notice as the placement of a digit moves to the left, its value increases by a magnitude of 10. And as the placement of a digit moves to the right, its value decreases by a magnitude of 10. All right, so if you look on the table there, you're going to see after the decimal points, you're gonna see terms such as tens, hundreds, and thousands. Let us explore the meaning of these terms. Let's start off with the tenths term. What do we mean by tenths? Well, a tenth is actually one part in 10 equal parts. We can write this as a fraction by simply having a numerator of one and a denominator of 10, or in other words, one upon 10. Now, since fractions can be expressed as decimals, we can express one over 10 as a decimal, which would be 0 0.1. The tenths uh, position is always one place to the right of the decimal point. Next, we have the hundreds, the hundreds column. The hundreds is simply one part in 100 equal parts. We can represent this as one over 100 as a fraction or 0 0.01. The hundreds column is always two places to the right of the decimal point. Then we have the thousands column. The thousands simply mean one part in 1,000 equal parts. We can write this as one upon a thousand or 0 0.001. The thousands column is always three places to the right of the decimal. And we can keep on going to 10,000, 100,000, millionths place, and so on. In the decimal number, four and 325 thousands, the four is in the ones place. So we will say four ones. Notice that a word is the answer. On the other hand, the value of the four in the number four and three hundred twenty-five thousands is four. Notice here that a number is the answer. So here is another exciting game that you can play online, but this time you will be practicing the place value of decimal numbers. I trust that this is going to be fun. How to play. Read the place value clue at the top of the screen. Three in tens place, for example. Find the corresponding pirate who is standing on the platform that contains a number with a three in the tens column. Click on that pirate to destroy him. Each rung gets harder and harder. Be careful, if you are wrong three times, the game is over. Repeat the process for ensuing math problems.
Now we're going to move on to modeling decimals with base 10 blocks. We can model decimals using base 10 blocks. Now, usually when we are modeling whole numbers, we would use the large cube to represent thousands. So we would say this is the thousands block. However, if we are modeling a decimal number that goes to the thousand place, the base 10 blocks would represent different values. What do I mean? That is, we would now use the large cube to represent one whole rather than 1000. Now, this is called a flat. How many of these flat does it take to make one of the large cube? Well, it takes 10 of the flats to make one whole. So we use the flat as one tenth, or we say it's the tenth block. Now, how many of these rods, these rods that I have up here, how many of these rods does it take to make up one of the flat? Well, it will take 10 of them. And if it takes 10 flats to make one hole, then how many rods will it take to make a hole? Yes, it will take 100 of them. So we are going to use the rod to represent 100 or call it the 100 block. And finally, how many of these small cubes does it take to make a rod? Well, it will take 10 small cubes. And we know that it takes 100 rods to make a hole. So how many small cubes will it take to make a hole? That's right. It is going to take 1,000 of them. So we will use the small cubes to represent one thousandth or call it the thousandth block. Let us look at an example. How can we use our base 10 blocks to represent the decimal number? Let us read this decimal number. This decimal number reads two and four hundred fifty-six thousandths. Well, to represent this number using our base 10 blocks, we first will use two large cubes to represent the whole number two. Then we will have to use four, four flats to represent four tenths. Next, we will use five rods to represent five hundredths. And lastly, we will use six cubes to represent six thousands. And that is how we use the base 10 blocks to model decimal numbers. Wasn't that easy? Now, how about you try to model a decimal number on your own? How can we model this decimal number here? This decimal number reads one and three thousand. If you use one large cube and three little cubes, then you are absolutely correct. Now, let us try changing things up a little bit. What if we were given the models instead and we have to determine the decimal number? Would you be able to do so? Let us look at an example. Can you state the decimal number being modeled here? If we have one large cube, three flats, and four rods? If you said one and three hundred forty thousands, you are absolutely correct. What about this? Can you state the decimal number being modeled here? Here, we have no large cube, eight flats, seven rods, and no small cube. Yes, it is 870 thousandths. Notice 
there is no need to pronounce the zero and 870,000. Okay, it is time for a quick practice. What place is the four in the number 12 and 456 thousands? If you said tenths, you are absolutely correct. The four is in the tenths place. Let us try one last one. What is the value of nine in the number 57 and 894 thousands? Yes, it is 0 0.09 since it is in the hundreds place. Let us recap what we would have learned in this lesson. In this lesson, we learned about decimal numbers, the difference between the place value and value of a digit in a decimal number, and we use base 10 blocks to model decimal numbers and vice versa. Once again, my name is Miss Hannah Jagru, and I am lecturing mathematical modeling and prediction at the Cyril Potter College of Education. I want to encourage you students to keep practicing the concepts you would have learned in this lesson. Remember, practice makes perfect. See you again until next time. Thank you.